Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service here at Crooks Memorial United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Lisa Barbary, and I'm glad that you've been able to take this time. And I pray that this is a, an opportunity for you to have a good and, and faithful start to your Lenten journey. We know that today marks the beginning of that Lenten journey, the season of Lent, a season of repentance and renewal of faith. And I want to invite you, if you weren't able to participate with us on, in worship on February 14th, I invite you to um, go back on Facebook or YouTube and look for that service. It should be uh, one of the first ones under the videos. And even if you don't participate in the full service, to, to take time uh, to hear the message that morning. Because it's my hope and our hope that between that morning's message and today, that we can be launched on a good and, and, and faithful start on our uh, Lenten journey, which is a time for us to prepare to embrace the resurrected Christ with a whole and longing heart. Throughout our season of Lent, we'll be talking about rending our heart to God, tearing open our heart for the things of, of God and returning to God. And so I want us to begin now and, and invite you to join me in uh, reading along, speaking along with me, the words from Psalm 103, verses 8 to 14. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God will not always accuse nor keep anger forever. God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love. As far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. As a parent has compassion for their children, so the Lord has compassion. For God knows how we were made. God remembers that we are dust. I invite you in joining me in singing, Bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Friends, Lent is a time to renew and to deepen our commitment to Christ. In, in the early church, Lent was a season in which uh, those new to the faith were prepared for baptism. And so for those of us that aren't new, this is a time for us to renew our faith, to, to renew our commitment through this season that I sometimes refer to as a decluttering, right? A time for us to take stock of our spiritual selves and uh, assess the places where we might need some cleansing, where we might need to, to move away distractions or perhaps in a way things that we're hoarding inside and places that are in need of renovation in our life. All so that we might better live into the life that God offers us, the life that's offered to us through Christ a new life. And that's why often on Ash Wednesday, we associate and then remember, we remember our mortality and our need for God and our need for repentance so that we can free ourselves from the things that weigh us down, sin and distractions, to fully live 
into the life, as we've said, that God offers us. And so we're um, probably most uh, familiar with the use of ashes as our sign of mortality on Ash Wednesday. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but I think today in this moment, we have another symbol to use, um, our masks. We don't need to look much further than these things that we put on to protect and care for one another as a sign of our mortality. And it's also a symbol of all the things that we have experienced this year. All the things of brokenness and grief and loss, anxiety, uncertain, and, and really a sense of, of a loss of control. Now, that's not to say that there hasn't been joy and, and unexpectedness, but as we look at where we are as we um, begin our, our Lenten season, we're especially mindful of the brokenness of humanity that is laid evident. And it's that brokenness in humanity that required Christ to come and, and to come to this earth to be God with us, to dwell and, and to teach and to ultimately die. And, and not just die, of course, but to be raised to show us the abundant love that God has for us and, and that we can be reconciled with God. But there are signs of our human sin all around us. I don't think that'll ever not be the case, but... I don't know about you, but it's heavy these days. It's heavy, the discord and the grief, the disunity, the reexamining of what is sin and spotlight places, spotlights being placed on things like systemic racism to highlight that sin, the ways in which we talk to one another because of how we view things or, or might have different opinions. There's the loss and brokenness and relationship and, and illness and concern for loved ones. But I think we also have something to remember. As we think about what we're living through, um, this is a marshmallow. And our families with children received a, a different devotion for today. Now, of course, they're, I'm hoping some are still participating in, in this service, but they had an at-home devotion to do and were given supplies to make some more. And so I have this marshmallow here. And the reason I bring this up is because, so if we look at a marshmallow, it's firm. We know what's inside. It's kind of sticky and, and gooey, but it holds its shape. It's firm. But what happens Think about what happens when a marshmallow gets nice and toasty, right? Do you ever like to um, roast marshmallows and are you one that burns them to a crisp? Of course, I don't recommend doing this part at home and then eating from it, from, from a candle, but I, I want you to see this so we see what's happening on the outside, right? We see. It's all getting black and crispy, right? But then, but then, let's roast it. I'm gonna roast it just a little bit more. I'm gonna make sure we don't fall off here. I'm gonna do it on this end. But you know what's gonna happen, right? The inside of it, it stays white and it stays soft and actually more so than it was to begin with. And so what we do is when you look at that, it's still white and bright, and it's a bit softer than it was before. And I think what this does is, is speaks to what the refining fires of life does, the refining fires of God um, that we experience in life and what those refining fires of God do to us. And what I mean is those refining fires of pain and loss of not feeling like we're in control. And it's not always bad things. I think refining fires of God can be love and, and joy, but they're all things that work differently in our lives to soften our hearts and, and release our grip on needing to be in control. Because when our hearts are, are softened, when they're open, with more space for Christ to work more fully within us, it frees us 
um, from all the clutter of sin and, and allows us to follow Christ more fully into the true way in which we were created to live. We can then become a place that God desires for Christ to be able to come and enter uh, into us and work within us and, and work from within us. And so as we think about that with Lent, that God desires to grace and love and the things that we live through, that as we trust God, that God can, we might feel the burn on the outside, but God is working if we're open on our inside. And so as we think about making space this Lent to receive Christ anew and to make our, our, um, our beings more, respect, more receptive to Christ working within us, I want us to sing another song. Um, it's entitled Sanctuary. Some of you may know it. The words will be on the screen. I hope you'll sing with me, but I hope you'll really listen to the words. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. It is you, Lord, who came to save the heart and soul of every man. It is you, Lord, who knows my weakness, who gives me strength with thine own hand. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lead me on, Lord, from temptation. Purify me from within. Fill my heart with your Holy Spirit. Take away sin. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a Sanctuary for you. As we continue to think about how we make space for Christ to dwell within our hearts and, and lives, one of the ways we do this is by uh, decluttering the space of sin. And we do this by offering confessions to God. And so in just a moment, a video will appear to lead us into a time of confession. You'll find a prompt on the screen for you to offer personal confessions, followed by words of assurance. So let us pray. Rain down on me, almighty God. Shower me with your grace. Flood me with your mercy. For I am a dry and barren land, consumed by the rot of my sin. 
burden beneath the weight of my transgressions. Pour out your loving kindness. Drench my heart with your presence. Renew my soul, refresh my purpose, reignite my passion. Rain down on me as I own my iniquities. Rain down on me as I humbly confess. Rain down on me as I enter your presence. Rain down on me, Almighty God. Listen, God has spoken your name and loves the sound of it. God has heard your confession and loves your honesty. God hears your concerns and embraces those in need. God rejoices when he gives thanks and urges us to be on the lookout for more opportunity for thanksgiving. God has forgiven you and loves you back into life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, this year is different. We are not imposing ashes like we normally would. You're not imposing ashes on one another. What you do hopefully have at home, at least many of you, is a piece of burlap with a black cross, a, a cross that's been painted on it, and prayed over for your household. If you don't have one of these from a Lenten kit that we made available, then I invite you to take a, some form of a cross in your home, whether it maybe is a piece of jewelry or, or one that you have out, or um, even taking a piece of, piece of paper and, and drawing a cross on it, because we want this to serve as a reminder. Because even though uh, the ashes are absent um, this year, 
there's a few reasons uh, why we use them. And so I want us to talk about that for just a moment. And, and one of them is because it's, uh, it's a symbol, of course. We find in the Bible that the placing of ashes um, is used as pleas to God for mercy, for compassion, for asking for forgiveness. Uh, the prophet Daniel dressed in a sackcloth. That's what we think of when we maybe look at the burlap. And, and with ashes, and, and he did so as a sign of the people's regret for turning away from God. Now also when we place ashes on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday in the sign of the cross, we recall the words that we hear in Genesis. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Placing the sign of the cross on our forehead or having this as a symbol and a reminder all through Lent, it recalls for us our baptism. It recalls for us that we are reminded in our baptism that we belong to God, that we are marked as Christ's own forever. So that remains true, whether we have ashes or even after the ashes have been washed away after Ash Wednesday. So I pray that you'll use the burlap or the paper that you've drawn a cross on or some other symbol of your cross to have out and as a reminder throughout your Lenten journey to remind you that you are marked as Christ's own. May it serve as a reminder of the journey that we embark on today, a journey of intention, of rendering our heart to God, of naming the sin and brokenness in our lives by seeking to remove the things that distract us and to prepare, to prepare to embrace the resurrected one again, that we might more fully live into the life that, that God offers us and, and longs for us to fully live into. Let us pray. Loving God, at the beginning of this Lenten season, we are met with the challenge of handing over every bit of our lives that do not come from you. To rid ourselves of what clutters our lives and all that distracts us from the simple truth of your love for us. Your prophets have called us to change the way we worship, to make internal sacrifices instead of external ones, to seek justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with you each and every one of our days. And if we don't give anything up for Lent, then let us at least give up this, that we might, li that we might cease living in ways that disconnect us from you. For every one of our steps is like a circle around your temple. Perhaps this Lent we can give up our way and give ourselves to your way for us. So lead and guide us on this Lenten way. May we walk with Jesus toward the hill just outside of Jerusalem. May we, like him, take up our cross and follow, spending each moment of our lives living responsively to you, just as Christ himself did. For that is the faithful way. Amen. Friends, go in peace.